Hello everyone and welcome to my course on creating a 3D platformer in Unreal Engine 5. We'll be creating a 3D platformer similar to Mario Odyssey, Donkey Kong, Banjo-Kazooie, Sly Cooper or even Ratchet & Clank. As I couldn't find any modern tutorials for Unreal Engine 5, I thought I would update the tutorials and get them working in Unreal Engine 5. If you are interested in creating your own 3D platformer, join me as I take you through step by step using blueprints in Unreal Engine to create your own platformer. Okay, so once you've downloaded Unreal Engine, um, you should get to a screen that looks similar to this. You'll have Unreal Engine 5.6 or whichever version of Unreal you're using. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the launch button. And once it loads up, you'll eventually end up with a screen like this. You'll probably start on recent projects. If it's your first time using Unreal, it might be blank. So what we're going to do, we're going to come to games. We're going to click third person and we're going to change this variant option to platforming. That way we can start with a bit more functionality compared to starting from scratch. And it's just a bit of a si uh, time saver. But I'll go over all the nodes, um, how they work and explain the logic behind them. So let's start by naming our project and letting it load in. So I'm going to name mine and I'll meet you back once the project has been loaded. Okay, so once the project has been loaded, sorry, um, you will be greeted to a screen like this. Your content browser might be down here, but this is how I have some set up so I can easily move it around. I usually have it on my second screen if I'm moving assets and such, but this is your general um, interface for when you're using Unreal. So your content browser here houses everything that will be included in your game. So all your meshes, your animations, your sounds, everything will be in here, including code. So yeah, to, to get familiar with this is probably gonna be your best friend. Uh, this is your editor. So this is the world that Unreal um, created for you. Uh, very simple, very nice, just basic uh, environment. But what's interesting is they've given us this variant platforming. So let's go there, select that folder, click this level platforming, which is gonna load a new level for us, which is this. Um, yours might spawn you over here. And this will show us what they've given us as a basis for the platforming template. So let's minimize this, play it, and let's see what they've given us. So obviously we've got a character, nice and easy, with a camera that goes fully around without moving the character, which is great. So now we've got obviously movement. It's a bit floaty, but we'll fix that, don't worry. We've got a jump, a double jump, with some nice trails on the feet to show. We've got a dash, also nice. And yeah, so we've got all of this and we've got a wall jump, which is great. This all lets us easily make adjustments and get a good start right away rather than having to build from scratch which there's nothing wrong with but it just makes our life a bit easier so we'll get to see the double jump in action here i mean the wall jump that lets us go all the way up here simple uh, sorry i suck at platforming but you know this is how we get it and we can jump off any wall it will just launch us in the opposite direction um, and then you can dash obviously but as you can see there's no additional functionality our right click doesn't do anything our left click doesn't do anything we have no attacks no crouching um, we've only got double jump single jump and the dash that's all we have so let's close out of this and take a look at what we're working with i'm going to reopen up my content browser and we're going to look at everything they've given us here so um, let's see we've got our character which is the Yours might be labeled as a BP platformer. Um, I just renamed mine, so don't worry about that. It's the same thing. Yours will be, I think, platform character, platforming character. So let's open it up and take a look. So in here, we have our character, the camera, um, the capsule component, all of the sort of stuff that uh, we need for our character. Um, don't worry about all this. It might look intimidating, but I'll go through it step by step when we need each piece. And yeah, let's go through basically everything you need here. So this is your viewport, your character you can move around, and everything is here. Your constructive script, don't worry about this. We'll get to it as well as all this other functionality. But the event graph is very important to us. This is where all our coding is going to go. So... I'm not going to go into in depth what each thing does here, but this is all the coding that they've created so far for us um, that lets us 
play with the platformer right from the get-go so yours might look a bit different i was uh, fiddling um i think it was basically like this at the start i just disabled things that i didn't i didn't think we we're going to use or want so we, this is all just code um the aiming code for the camera the movement the dash and we'll make adjustments to all of this and i'll explain it as we go along um, especially when you get to the movement section of the tutorials um, to get all of this working but for now let's just click compile and save if you did make any changes and let's make some adjustments to the uh, folders itself so that it makes more sense and we don't have multiplications of inputs and blueprints and stuff so what i'm going to do straight away is i'm going to create a new folder called blueprints and i'm going to put all my blueprints in here even ones that are hiding in folders like this so just click all of them and drag and move um, i've also renamed the player like i said earlier to pp player just so that i know that this is the player we'll be creating enemies later as well so you'll see that's much easier so i'm just gonna right click click update references so that we can delete this folder now great here's the animations which we'll get to a bit later here's input actions so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here i'll explain what input actions is shortly but let's just move everything into the folders so that we have a good basis to work from so i'm just going to click and drag this to this input actions folder and now we can update references and delete this folder because we don't want duplicates um, now we can click and drag all of these into the main input folder move there happy days same thing update redirectors then we can delete the folder that's all for now but let's get into the input actions so input actions are all the actions your character will take um, as inputs via your controller or keyboard <sighs> sorry i'm taking a sip of tea so it's good to have a plan with this. So I've created a controller layout how I want my character to move. So as you can see here, take a pause, take a look. This is how I want my controller to work for the player I'm creating or the character I'm creating. So let's go and recreate all the actions that aren't there already. And I'll show you how to do that now. So because every uh, for certain actions like the jump and the dash, there are one click options. So we can just reuse them. So right click, duplicate, and just rename them to something else. So IA attack, for instance, because we have an attack ability. Then do it again for the interact. So IA underscore interact. Uh, same with the rest. So I'm just gonna go ahead and recreate the rest of these and I'll catch you when I'm done. Okay, so we're back now. I've created all the input actions I want for now. Um, obviously, you make them how you want. Um, have as many or as little as you need. But remember, usually how they work is one button per interaction. But obviously, there's special circumstances like um, holding buttons and such, or holding buttons and comboing with other buttons to create other functionality. That can all be done. But for now, we're just focusing on creating a simple platformer to get going. So. Once you've done all that, click save all, and we're gonna go back to the main folder. And here's some touch um, inputs. We're not gonna worry about those. Um, we really don't need them. So for now, let's just delete them because we don't need them. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, this is just in reference to the BP player, which we'll fix now as soon as we're done here, because we're gonna go into there and create a bit of code for the input actions. Just force delete. Happy days, got rid of all of this. So we're gonna open up the IMC platforming and take a look at everything here. So these are your mappings. So when we click these down, you'll see that we've given them a keyboard shortcut. So IA jump and gamepad face bottom. So that would be your A button on an Xbox controller or the X button on a PlayStation controller. So if we minimize that, we get to see the same thing here uh, WSAD, the arrow keys, and the gamepad. Same with the look and same with the dash. So you, they're using left shift and the game face button right, which I'm going to use as well as you saw there. But let's go ahead and add the rest here. So we're going to go IA attack, drop down, and we're going to say click this and left click. That's just a shortcut that lets us create um, it with 
an input rather than looking for it ourselves. But let's do it again for the gamepad. So once we're here, that'll bring you a whole list of things. We're just gonna go gamepad and we're gonna go to face button left. So that will be the X button on the um, Xbox controller and the square button on PlayStation. Let's do it the same for the rest. So what you will see is there's a very annoying bug which still hasn't been fixed and it drives me insane is that once you start creating new input actions, the whole list opens up. Um, I don't really know how to fix this. Um, it doesn't even seem like Unreal does because this has been a problem for ages. But what you can do is minimize everything, right click on it, collapse all, and then make a new input that way. And then everything will be crouched. But as soon as you click anything, it will open up. So just be wary, it, it might be a bit frustrating, but you'll have to get used to it, unfortunately. Okay, so I've mapped out everything I want my buttons to be. Obviously, you make them however you want, but that's the basis of it. And just click save when you're done. Okay, so um, once you've set up your controller and you start playing, you should then be able to now use your controller. As you can see, I'm pressing my controller and I've got the functionality. Look around, happy days, jump. But my other buttons don't do anything yet. So we've got our dash and our double jump. That's simple enough. So let's figure out the rest. So I'm back in my player and we did get some errors. So let's explain what those were. So they were looking for the second input but we're not using that input. So just go ahead and delete that. Um, you, it will say something like thumbstick one um, error. Just grab them, delete them, compile, save, and the errors will go away. And then you should be able to test again and see what you want. Um, see that the controller works, sorry. That's how I should be saying this. So let's get rid of all the code we don't need as we don't want this taking up more space in memory. So for now, let's get rid of this as we're not using Android or iOS, but obviously if you are, keep them. And we'll go down the list. So this trail uh, trail color, that's just to change how we want the trail color to look. For now, don't worry about it, we'll fix that later. Obviously here's the, the where the two errors were, it was here on the aim inputs and the move input. I just got rid of them, click compile, save, and to fix your issues. Here is the um, dash input, which I'll go over in the movement tutorial along with the jump and the event for the jump and the landing. But let's go ahead and quickly make the rest of the input actions and finish up this tutorial. So IA underscore attack. You can do this by right clicking anywhere on the um, event graph, opening this up and selecting here. And for now, we're just gonna put in simple um, strings, print strings to show that when we click this button, this is what it does. So print string. So click and drag off the started and just go print string. And then just change here, I am attacking. Then we'll go for the next one, I a map. And you'll do this for each of them, print string, opening map. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and make all of this. Um, and I'll catch you back here when I'm done. So basically just go ahead and do the same thing, go through each one um, and label a string and then we'll play it and we'll get to see what actually happens. Okay, so I'll catch you back here now. Okay, so once you're done there, just click compile and save for now. Um, can obviously do the rest yourself uh, it's, it's fairly simple but let's click play now on the main menu and see what they do so i'm going to pick up my controller and let's see what happens so i'm going to press the attack button and then use if you see in the top there it says i am attacking so once we have the attacking set up um, we will remove that and your character will attack so you see i'm but button mashing i am attacking same with the rest interacting um, special ability binoculars crouching um, photo mode, uh, pause menu, opening map, resetting the camera. So once we have that code in place, we will replace all of that and we will get to have our character. So that's it for now. So in this episode, we have um, set up our characters controls. We've started customizing the project and we've 
started looking at the platform and how to get started in Unreal Engine. So that's going to be it for this episode and I will catch you back here for movement. That should be the next tutorial, I think. Okay, uh, that's it for now and have fun.